So it's being reported that Rudy Giuliani is discussing possible cooperation with the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection. Really? Let's talk about that. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So we're being told that Rudy Giuliani is in talks discussing possible cooperation with the House Select Committee, which keeps postponing and rescheduling Rudy's appearance under the subpoena that they issued to him previously. Here's the recent reporting from the New York Times, which I have to admit gave me a bit of a chuckle. Headline. Giuliani in talks to testify to House January 6th panel. It is not clear how much assistance he might provide in the investigation into former President Donald J. Trump's efforts to hold on to power. So let's say that again. It's not clear how much assistance Rudy might provide. Well, let's try to clear that up, shall we? What is Rudy Giuliani facing presently that might impact his decision whether he wants to testify under oath about Donald Trump's potential crimes? Well, Giuliani is under criminal investigation for his work in Ukraine, work, mind you, on behalf of Donald Trump, with Rudy, you know, globetrotting, trying to dig up phony dirt on Trump's political opponent, Joe Biden. Rudy Giuliani had 18 electronic devices seized by the FBI after a federal judge concluded there was probable cause to believe there was evidence of crime in Rudy's electronic devices. Rudy brought frivolous, fake, fraudulent lawsuits trying to corruptly, or let's call it what it is, criminally overturn the results of a presidential election. Rudy's law license was suspended in New York. Rudy's law license was suspended in Washington, D.C. Rudy is being sued for about a billion dollars by Dominion Voting Systems. Well, that's not precise. Giuliani faces $1.3 billion dollar lawsuit over false election fraud claims. And of course, to cap it all off, Rudy Giuliani incited the insurrection by telling Trump's angry mob, let's have trial by combat. So friends, Rudy Giuliani is the walking, breathing embodiment of the Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. So let's go back to the question, how much assistance might Rudy provide to the House Select Committee? Yeah, the answer is none. This whole thing is a sham. You know, his attorney is doing this negotiation dance with the House Select Committee, pretending like Rudy is considering assisting in the investigation into Donald Trump's crimes so that at the end of the day, when Rudy defies the congressional subpoena, Rudy's lawyers will yell and scream, we tried to negotiate in good faith, but the House Select Committee is conducting a witch hunt, blah, blah, blah. So there are really only two questions that I think need to be answered. One. What will the House Select Committee do once Rudy defies the lawfully issued congressional subpoena? Will the House Select Committee vote to hold him in contempt and refer him to the Department of Justice for criminal prosecution for contempt of Congress? And the second question, if they do, will the Department of Justice care? Will they you know, go the same way they went with Bannon and actually indict Rudy 
for contempt of Congress? Or will they treat Rudy the way they're treating Mark Meadows? Because by my calculations, we're on day 62 of the Mark Meadows indictment watch. Day 62, and Mark Meadows is still out there, footloose, fancy free, and unindicted. And I know we've talked about this before, friends, but the law actually requires something of the Department of Justice once Congress refers somebody for criminal prosecution for contempt. The law requires that the U.S. attorney shall present the matter to the grand jury for its action. Shall. Not might, not may, not in the discretion of the U.S. attorney. Shall present it to the grand jury for its action. Now, let me say there is one thing that makes sense to me regarding the 62-day delay. If the Department of Justice is in the process of trying to present evidence to the grand jury that would involve indicting Mark Meadows in a larger case, for example, for a conspiracy to defraud or commit offenses against the United States, what we call a 371 conspiracy, if that's the holdup, then that actually makes sense of the 62-day delay. And if that's what the Department of Justice is doing, it also makes some sense on the justice front. And justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.